Well, time to bring it on. Okay, let's Some go of the for email it. that's mm -hmm. come in. Okay, Pat, this first one is from Deborah, who says, Pat, I want to pray with my husband. I try at night before he goes to sleep, and he'll say what she says, amen. In the morning, he just says, thank you for this day. And that's about all I can get out of him. I know he talks to the Lord every morning, but I just think our marriage and prayer life would be much stronger together. Any suggestions? Oh, my suggestion is take what you've got and thank the Lord for amen, it. Amen, brother. But uh, I really think that's amen. it. But, you know, what he needs to do is to see some men who are not ashamed to pray. And uh, there are men's groups, people who uh, they're good men. If you could find people like that in the church, or maybe he'd come over uh, for dinner or you know, a social gathering or something, and he could get to know people like that uh, who are not ashamed. You know, a lot of men are very private, and they, 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 their inner spiritual life, they don't want to expose to anybody, including their spouse. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Uh, so as I say, thank God for what you've got. What's next? Okay, this is Donna who says, I've been remarried and have adult children. My husband also has adult children. My parents died and left a large inheritance. My husband says that because he's the spiritual head of the house, that the money is his and demands that the money be put into our joint account. He has racked up credit card debt over $30,000 since getting married two years ago. My parents worked hard and saved all their lives, so I would have an inheritance. I want to use some money to help with my kids' college expenses, etc. And my husband's very angry. Do I just hand over the money to keep the peace or stand my ground, put it into a separate account to protect it? I'm afraid that this could lead to years of fighting and strife. Boy, I'm sorry for that. Uh... That money is yours. It was given you by your parents. It doesn't belong to him. Uh, you know, a lot of people have trusts that actually keep a spouse from getting the money uh, because they know that the spouse will waste the, the funds and they intended for their, their child and they want the child to have the money or their grandchildren. So uh, your parents gave specific instruction as you said, they worked hard. They saved the money. It's their money, and they gave it where they wanted. They did not give it to your husband. So you need to tell him, I'm sorry. That is given to me. It's mine, and I'm putting it in a trust account for me and for my children. And I'm sorry. Uh, it's not yours. Uh, they, He'll get over it. Huh? He'll get over it. Well, you hope he gets over it. If you have a, a fight about it, uh, that's one of those things. You married him. I didn't. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is a viewer who says, I'm 21 years old and I have had a speech impediment my entire life. I don't have any mental issues impacting my speech. My tongue just wasn't trained properly. I avoid saying words such as for and door. It's real tough. I've been praying that I can speak properly and I have faith that he can do anything. I'm just not finding any scripture of him healing anybody with speech impediments. Is there any scriptural references? Yeah. Does he heal speech impediments? It, where <clears throat> Moses said, I'm not eloquent. And God said to Moses, who made your mouth? Uh, uh, he said, I can put words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can be my spokesman. And Moses said, oh, I can't, I can't do it. And God said, you will do it. And okay, well, I'll put Aaron out there. He can be the spokesman. But... <clears throat> One of the, the great uh, Greek uh, debaters was in Demosthenes, uh, who put rocks in his mouth, and he used to shout against the sea with rocks in his mouth to overcome speech. Uh, Clark Gable, well-known movie actor, played in Gone with the Wind. He had a real high squeaky voice. And this lady took him under her wing, and he would sit with a piano and hit a note, a bass note, and force his voice to hit that it's note that over up. and over and over again. So you got a problem, work on it. It's, it's a muscle you can train like any other. All right. This is a viewer who says, what is your advice for a teenager, 15, trying to grow in Jesus Christ? I've been through a lot like internet pornography and sexual addiction. I want God's will to be done. Thank you for your advice. <clears throat> well, you know, the Bible says, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? So you've got to so, uh, saturate yourself in the word of God. You need to read the word. You need to read uh, and memorize scripture, especially the Psalms and Proverbs, over and over again. But how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word? 
uh, thy word is a lamp and a light, and you need to know the word of God, and it needs to be part of you. Uh, it's just like breathing. You, you need to just, when something comes up, the Word will be there for you. Mm -hmm. And it's a st <coughs> stabilizing factor. And, uh, you know, that's how you do it. I don't know what else to tell you. You know, I second that. It was the Word that changed my life. It wasn't yeah. just praying the prayer of salvation. It was getting into the Word the and word. letting the Word get into me. It, well, it, it, you know, you, you, you eat the Word. The Word becomes part of you, and you... you it actually is part of the fiber of your being. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for email questions, okay. but thank you, and thank you for your questions. We love hearing from you.